Welcome to part two of the Fire TV Beginner's Guide. And we're gonna pick up where we left off in part one, and that is at tip 14. And if you missed part one, don't worry, I'll link it at the end of this video, and a link to it will also be pinned in the top comment below. So if you wanna check out part one first, feel free to do that. Anyway. Let's continue. Okay, let's talk about leveling up your user experience now. Did you know that Amazon has their own web browser built into the Fire Sticks? It's called the Silk Browser, and it looks like this. Now, if you're wondering why would you use this instead of Google or any of the other browsers out there, well, this one has been designed purposely for these devices, so it's pretty intuitive. You can access and browse the web pretty seamlessly with just your remote control. And if you hit the hamburger menu, which is making me hungry once again, you have a bunch of features here. For example, you can bookmark your favorite websites like this one. The problem is the Silk browser actually uses kind of mobile optimized websites and not the full desktop versions of those websites. But check this out. If I was to critique this, I'd probably say, wouldn't it be much better if you could use a mouse and keyboard and have the full desktop experience? Well, guess what the next tip is? It's how to connect a Bluetooth keyboard and you can wire in keyboards as well, but this way is much easier. I picked this foldable keyboard up from Amazon for under 20 pounds here in the UK. An absolute bargain, folds down, you can place it on the shelf or whatever, whenever you're not using it. And when you wanna use it, you literally just fold it out and it's got a trackpad built in. There is an on off switch on the side and a Bluetooth pairing button to put it into pairing mode. So you need to do that first. Now, once you've done that, go to your Fire TV settings, then go to remotes and Bluetooth devices, and then scroll down to other devices and add device. Now all you need to do is click on your keyboard that should be visible here in this list, follow the instructions on screen, and now you can use the mouse and keyboard to control your Fire TV. But the mouse actually doesn't work properly until you toggle on the full desktop sites. So to do this, hit the hamburger menu. Still hungry, so I need to finish this video quick. Go to request desktop site, and now you'll be able to use the proper mouse and full keyboard to browse the full version of the World Wide Web. Okay, did you know you can connect your Fire TV to speakers on your Wi-Fi network, and you can even connect Bluetooth speakers to it as well. So one good use case for this could be if you've got stereo speakers either side of your TV, you could use those as kind of like a sound bar solution, or maybe you have a sound bar solution, you could use that too. Or let's say you're on holiday and you've got a Bluetooth speaker with you and the TV in your room isn't that good and the speakers built in aren't that good, you could use your Bluetooth speaker as the actual TV speaker. To set this up, all you need to do is go to your Amazon Alexa app, go to Echo and Alexa devices, select your device, now go to the section that says connected devices and choose what speaker or speaker group you want to connect it to. And side note, one of the reasons you might want to get a Firecube is it actually has its own speaker built in. So that kind of doubles up as an audio device. And it actually sounds really good given its compact stature. Okay, come back to the home screen and see this little icon here that looks like a TV. And if you have a newer Fire Stick remote, it actually has that button here. So you can just shortcut to it from there. Tapping this takes you to the live TV channel streaming over the internet. And out of the box, the options are quite limited. So here's how to expand those options immediately, and more than double them. Go to the search tool, type in Pluto TV, install this, and immediately once you do this, it adds all of these extra channels to your live TV menu. There's movie channels, there's music channels, there's a Pimp My Ride channel, and there's even 24 seven Baywatch TV. There's a little bit of something for everybody here. This is the street to the sun. It's more like the moon to me. <laughs> anyway, now listen here real quick. When it comes to consuming content on the Fire TV devices, particularly when it comes to movies, one problem that people run into quite often is that the audio, when it comes to the vocal range, is kind of washed out by the music or the loud sound effects in movies. And let me know if you've ever experienced this, but there is a powerful hidden feature within the Fire TV devices that can solve this problem and boost that vocal frequency range up for you. To access it, go to settings. I don't need to tell you how to do that, hopefully by this point, go to display and audio. Now go to audio and go to advanced audio and here you can turn on the dialogue enhancer. Now the voices will pop just a little bit more, making it easier to hear them. And check out this other setting in the same menu. It's the volume leveler. Now you may want to revisit this setting if you find that your different apps on your Fire TV device have different volumes. For example, Netflix is really loud, YouTube is really quiet. What this will do is bring them both in line so they have the same volume levels. So you may need to come back to this tip. Ever wondered what Netflix looks like in Japan? Well, here it is. This is Japanese Netflix. 
Netflix. And you might be wondering how I've got this. Well, I've got this using a VPN and I'm using the CyberGhost VPN and I made a video about this. They've actually given me a discount code to give to you guys. 84% off at four months free if you want to try it out. Anyway, I'm not trying to sell it to you. They didn't sponsor this video. It is actually a very good service. Now to download this, use the search menu, type in CyberGhost VPN, install it. It is a proper verified app store app, so there's no risk involved. A couple of things you need to do to get this working once you've set it up and logged in. You need to go to the settings within CyberGhost, go to the VPN section, go to VPN protocol and change it to open VPN. And then second of all, go to the transport mode and change this to TCP. And now you'll be ready to rock and roll and watch content from anywhere around the world. Let's say you wanna watch Japanese Netflix. All you do is make sure it's closed in the background. So to do this, we go back to one of the first tips I showed you. Go to the background app that we set up and placed at the beginning of the menu. Highlight Netflix, go to full stop. Now we can reboot Netflix and when it does reboot, it will think you're in a different country. And if you're worried about accidentally leaving on CyberGhost, making it permanently think you're in another country, don't worry about that if you have the fire cube because when you activate CyberGhost on the fire cube, you'll see a yellow strobe light running across the front of it continuously until you turn it off. So this is a great feature for those of you that have Alexa enabled cameras. For example, the ring doorbell, the Eufy doorbells, the blink cameras, the Eufy cameras. What you can actually do is bring them up onto the fire stick if you ask your AI nicely. And I have a ring doorbell. Whenever someone pushes it, it pops up picture in picture on the fire TV. So I can actually see who's at the door whilst I'm still sitting on the sofa watching a movie. And at that point I can decide whether to open it or not. And what makes this even better is you can actually speak through the doorbell from your remote, or if you have the fire cube, it has mics built in. So you can speak to the fire cube and it will be relayed to the door. So if you're feeling really lazy, you don't even have to get out of your chair. And here's another bonus tip and a brand new feature that a lot of people don't even know about yet. And remember where you saw it first. If you tap the AI button, the little blue button at the top of your remote, a new menu pops up. You can access your smart home and this gives you access to all of your smart devices connected to your AI. If you click weather, it will show you the weather on screen and read it out to you. And the communication tab allows you to drop in on other Echo devices on the premises and you can even message directly from here as well. Okay, tip 20. As you know, AI is set to take over the world, but whilst we're still kind of in charge of the artificial intelligence, we might as well make the most of it. Let's say there was someone really important at the door, like the pizza delivery guy, and you had to get out of your chair. When you make it back to the sofa, pizza in hand, what you might want to do is use the command to rewind time on whatever you were watching. And you can do that very easily with your AI. You just say the wake word and you specify the amount of time that you'd like to rewind. And this works brilliantly, so I definitely recommend you use this one. And once again, you don't even have to lift the finger, but if you don't have the fire cube or an echo device, you will have to lift a finger to push the blue button at the top before you can command the AI. So one of the problems that a lot of users run into is running out of storage space on the device. One of the great things about the new Fire Cube is it actually has a USB port in the back so you can actually expand the storage on board with a USB hard drive. If you don't have a Fire Cube, there is a solution for you. And that is one of these, it's an adapter that allows the power still to pass through, but actually introduces a USB A port to your Fire Stick so you can plug in external hard drives. But if you want a really quick solution that doesn't cost a penny and you just want to clear off some junk off your device, there's an easy way to do that with an app you can find on the App Store. It's called ES File Manager. So just go to search search for that ES file manager, ignore the advertising, skip past that. You don't need to pay for it to delete things. And on the home screen, all you wanna focus on here is the music, the movies, and the apps sections. These are often the storage hogs. So check each one of these folders. If there's any videos or music that you don't need anymore, delete those. In the app section, if there's any apps that you don't need, you can uninstall them easily from here. And to take this one step further, in the app section, there could be some APK installer files which aren't doing anything taking up space on your device. To check if there are any there, do this. At the top of the app screen page, you'll see the drop down menu that says, user apps. In the drop down menu, select all APKs. And if there are any APK files here at all that you don't need, which is probably all of them, delete them. I don't have any because most of the apps installed from the Amazon store actually auto delete for you. And here's a bonus method to free up space. And it's actually far easier than the ES Explorer. Go to settings, applications. Now go to manage install apps. 
And as you scroll through the apps on this page, you'll see how much storage they're actually using and how much app data is being stored on the device. And if there's anything in this list on the right hand side that looks like it's getting out of hand, you might want to clear the data. And if there's any apps you see here that you're not ever going to use, you might as well uninstall them. And it's really easy to do. Just select the app and push the play pause button. And that is how easy it is to uninstall it. Okay, here's a fun one. And this works really well if you have the Amazon Fire Stick app on your device. So if you hold down the home button, the same way we do to get to the settings quickly, we can actually activate the screen mirroring. Now, if you open your Amazon Fire Stick app on your phone, you can mirror your Android device to your TV. It's a simple trick, but it's a powerful one if used appropriately. It's not great for gaming because there's gonna be latency, but it can be great for things like showing your holiday photos to your family and things like that. Okay, here's another quick trick. So if you've got Bluetooth earbuds or over ear Bluetooth headphones, you can pair these up to the Fire Stick so you can keep watching TV, even if everybody else in the house is sleeping and you don't wanna bother anybody. So to do this, go to settings, remote some Bluetooth, add Bluetooth devices. Make sure your headphones are in pairing mode and now you'll see them on the right hand side pair them and once you've done this your headphones are now connected directly to the fire stick super simple to do but super useful and you can do the same thing with bluetooth gaming controllers so even playstation dualshock 4 controllers will work and you can buy cheap bluetooth controllers from amazon purpose built for fire stick to connect them all you need to do go to settings go to remotes and bluetooth and go to gaming controller follow the steps and it really is that easy and if you're in America, your Fire TV devices actually have the Lunar Game Streaming Service, which is amazing. We don't have it here in the UK, which is really annoying. But guess what? If you are in another country and you change your Amazon account to an American account and you use the CyberGhost VPN and send it to America, you can use Luna. Anyway, once your controller is connected up, you've got a bunch of games you can play. For example, Asphalt from the Amazon App Store. And it runs really nicely on these newer Amazon devices. And if you're wondering how I'm playing Super Mario on the Fire TV, well, I was gonna add that into this video about how to sideload emulators and sideload app stores to get apps that aren't available on the Amazon App Store, but it kind of felt a bit too advanced for this video. So let me know if you wanna see that in a separate video. And if I get enough requests, I will make that for you. Anyway, as promised at the beginning of the video, here are the five reasons why you might want to consider upgrading to the new Firecube Gen 3. Number one is the expandable storage option built in. So as I mentioned before, the problem of running out of space on Amazon Fire Sticks is quite a common one. The Fire Cube has a full USB-A port built in, so you can plug in an external hard disk drive, a USB stick to expand the storage, and the Fire Cube can actually recognize it as its own sort of storage and even load apps from it directly. And that USB port also opens up the door to USB hubs, so you can add wired keyboards, wired mouses into the device as well if you wanted to. Number two is the HDMI pass-through option. So with the Fire Sticks, you have to sacrifice a HDMI port on your TV for the Fire Stick. But with the Fire Cube, you don't have to sacrifice the HDMI port because you have the HDMI pass-through built in. So this means you can connect a console or a set-top box or whatever into that pass-through port and it will actually use HDMI CEC and you can even use AI to tell it to turn on whatever it is that you've plugged into the pass-through port as well. So that's fantastic. Number three is the Wi-Fi 6E speed. So without getting too techy on this, and to put it simply, if you have a modem that supports Wi-Fi 6E, you can receive up to 5.4 gigabits per second, which is incredibly fast. To put it into perspective, regular Wi-Fi 6 is around 40% faster than Wi-Fi 5, which is what most people have. Wi-Fi 6E is double the speed of Wi-Fi 6, and that's insane. Just know this it's really fast when it comes to data. Number four, the Firecube supports Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos in 4K. So this means you're gonna get amazing HDR, lots of details in the shadows, great details in the highlights and everything in between. And it also supports Dolby Atmos, which is the full home cinema sound experience, including the upward firing channels required for Dolby Atmos. And all of this is coming from this little cube. It's pretty amazing. Number five, the Fire Cube is essentially an Echo Dot. So this means you can ask it anything. You can treat it just like an Echo device. You can set timers, you can run routines, you can control your smart home with your voice. And it's got a proper built-in speaker. So if you want to play some tunes, you can do that too. And it's rocking an octa-core chip, making it the Fire TV device with the most firepower to date at the time of this video. So if your current Fire TV device is a bit slow now, now might be the time to jump ship 
to the queue. And on that note, if you enjoyed this video, a little thumbs up would be appreciated. If you got any value out of this, a little subscribe would be amazing. And if you want to learn some more tips and tricks for Echo devices, there's the thumbnail on the screen right now. Go check that out. If you do, see you in the next one. Don't be late. Bye.